Join us here at Last Adam Tabernacle as we bring Christ to the nation. Glory be to God. Let me first explain why I'm dressed like this. <laughs> uh, you know, there's no power, Nadia, uh, Chiwatule, Nigeria. Okay, in fact, it's a wonder that I arrived here on time. Okay, because at around quarter past nine, okay, I drove to Ntinda, looking with a shirt, eh? you know, uh, Ntinda, some laundry, and yeah. Then, um, yeah, then I told her, I said, but you're supposed to have a generator. Okay, so well. Then I drove down to Nadia, nothing. Then I drove down to Nigeria. Can you imagine? But thank God, I was praying the Holy Ghost as I what? As I drove, so yeah. But some guys were driving so slowly, you know. Eh? Okay, and then, so I come back with an, an iron shirt. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, uh, and so then I remembered, eh, you know, eh, I checked in my archives, eh, and I unleashed this. You have never uh, seen it, but uh, it was in my what? Archives, glory be to God. This is just to show you that you don't know all my suits, you don't know, <laughs> eh? you think you know all my shoes now, eh? I'll shock you. Yeah, glory be to God. Amen. But how did I get this shirt? Now, women are wonderful people. Okay? Women are wonderful people, but they also complicate life. So, uh, there was some guy, some rich guy, who was celebrating 50 years. This is like two months ago, 50 years. Now, his wife, the, the people she invited, okay, she requested them, so, eh, eh, it should be gold, eh, no, black with what? Uh, as what? She didn't say splash. Anyway, but with some gold in it. You, you understand? Eh? Now, all that thing is, those things that it is women who are, just invite people for the party. Don't complicate things what they should what? What they should wear. Glory be to God. Surprisingly, even her husband, eh, the... The, eh, the, the happy birthday boy <laughs> was in his own things. He wasn't in black. There was nothing gold on him. Glory be to God. And the wife was what? Harassing guests. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I think, uh, and, uh, you wonder what the world would be like without women. Eh? I mean, just imagine you have guys like Sam, Alan, yeah, and then they do a birthday one. Glory be to God. Amen. It would be ridiculous. No man, eh, Bruce. Eh? Ah, man, eh? that wouldn't be worth a what? Eh, celebration. So, we thank God for women. Hallelujah. Robert Ladon said that uh, women are wonderful people. That is why God created very many of them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, women are wonderful what? People, but sometimes eh, they what? Yeah, they make things, you know. Uh, yeah. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So give a big hand clap to praise and the entire worship team. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. God is good. God is good. Yes. Thank you, Sam, for uh, what you shared. Um, yes. Uh, Yes, the Lord told us that uh, in this season, he's going to do us good, amen? He's going to reward, uh, to reward us uh, for many of the things that we have done for him, amen? And uh, those, uh, that word and uh, what he said thereafter was confirmed in various ways. So what Sam has shared is... Uh, is of the Lord, eh? okay? God is going to perform what he said he will perform. Glory be to God. Amen? Now, knowing that God is going to do what he said he's going to do, eh? okay? 
okay? The automatic response from every one of us should be thanksgiving. Hmm? It should be praise. Eh? Glory be to God. Okay? It should be, you know, a heart of gratitude. Eh? Okay? Gratitude, gratefulness for what is going to do. Eh? Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. All right? That also means that for now, okay, you should, uh, you should uh, uh, be content with what you have and where you are, okay? Being content doesn't mean that you don't want more, all right? It doesn't mean that you don't want increase. God has said he's going to increase you, okay? God has said he's going to reward you, okay? But as, you know, you wait for those things, okay? In the meantime, you should be content with what you have now and where you are, okay? And that heart which is content, okay, is a heart which can thank God. You cannot be discontented and you thank God or and you thank anyone. Glory be to God. You cannot. Huh? All right? So, be content with where you are, okay, with what you have, okay? As you wait and eagerly expect the increase. Do you understand? Eh? Okay? I'm not saying don't desire more. Eh? Okay? God has said he's going to do more. Okay? But in the meantime, be content. Be grateful eh, for what you have. Okay? Be grateful for what you are, uh, for where you are now. Glory be to God. I remember, uh, you know, in the Bible, uh, there's uh, uh, when John was baptizing um, people, okay, yeah, some people would come to him and tell him that, now, what should I do, eh? You know, what should we do? Okay, among those people were soldiers eh, who came to him, say, what should we do? Then he told them, uh, I got the scripture. He told them in Luke chapter 3, verse 14. He told them, okay, they asked him, saying, what shall we do? Eh? So he said to them, do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. Glory be to God. Okay? Be content with your salaries. All right? As you expect more, okay, and increment, as you expect another job, okay, be content with what you're earning now. Okay? Thank God for what you're earning. Hmm? Okay? Even if it is 10,000 shillings, okay, God expects you to be what? Content. Okay? And that, you know, will, will make you actually thank him. Thank him for that 10,000 shillings. Glory be to God. Hmm? All right? Hmm? Thank him. Glory be to God. Hmm? Be content with your work. Brother, this is very serious. Eh? Be content with your wages. All right? Many people, eh? you know, many Christians, eh? are not content with their what? Wages. With their little wages. Hmm? With their little what? But God is like, you had better be what? Content. With your little salary. Hallelujah. Other people are earning too much money, but they are not content. Hmm? According to them, it is little money. What can this money do? Hmm? What can this? I, I even can't pay now. I can't pay school fees for my kids. Eh? I can't pay this money. It's too little. Eh? 50 a.m. is too little. What? No? Now my daughter called me the other day from London saying that the deadline. <laughs> okay? From London, not from what? Uganda. Uganda just pay one point. How much? 1.5? Makere. No? So someone's like, I need 50 ma. Okay, this 50M is useless. The 49 million shilling. Glory be to God. 
All right? So it just shows you that happiness has little or nothing to do with how much you're earning. Hmm? Glory be to God. You know that, eh? <laughs> it has nothing, little or nothing to do with how much you're earning. Hmm? Okay? You go to the U.S. and earn what? Wow, how much? 20,000, you know? Okay? And then you, you come and tell us whether, uh, and be sincere, eh? when you come back for a holiday, be sincere with us whether you, th- you feel eh, your Happier than us in Uganda. You know, eh? Okay? It has, you know, Jesus said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he has. Glory be to God. A man's life does not consist, eh? Okay? In the abundance of the things he has. Okay? That wasn't a philosopher who said that. It was Jesus. Hmm? A man's life does not consist in the what? So as you look forward to the abundance, okay, you should go there with that attitude. If you think those things are going to, you know, okay, if you put your trust, your happiness in what it's going to do, Okay, after two weeks, eh? hmm? it will be, car- you understand? Eh? Hmm? Glory be to God. Okay? So what creates happiness, what creates real uh, joy, real life? It is contentment. Glory be to God. It is what? Contentment. When people are not content eh, with what they have, eh? okay, they do ridiculous things. Eh? Hmm? As we shall see. Hallelujah. Does it sound good? Who I'm discouraging you for? Hmm? A content heart, a grateful heart. Hallelujah. Hmm? Okay. Hmm? Glory be to God. Now. Uh, you, if you read the words for the week, there was that uh, a dream I shared in just a sentence, eh, which Juliana had in 2015. Eh? You remember when we were singing the song "Showers of Blessings," eh? okay, which is somewhere in Ezekiel. Eh? Ezekiel, what? <laughs> yeah, Ezekiel, either 34 or 43. Okay? Anyway, and God was telling the people that's what? Uh, so, yeah, it's here. It says, verse 27, okay, verse 26, I'll make them and the places all around my hill a blessing, and I'll cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessings. Okay, now, the season God is talking to us about is exactly that. Eh? Okay? She has different kinds of blessings. Eh? Okay? Some or all of us, financial increase, you know, may, different things. All right? Wives, you know. Eh? Okay? But, but I hope you know that God doesn't give boyfriends and girlfriends. Eh? Does he? God doesn't give what? Boyfriends, he doesn't give girlfriends. Okay, God gives wives and what? And husbands. Eh? Okay, boyfriends, girlfriends. It's, it's some some guys started that thing recently. Eh? It was never there, even in Africa. It wasn't there. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. So showers of blessings. Glory be to God. Okay, like some have said, okay, God is going to do these things. Eh? He did it, you know, in 205. All right? Juliana went to the U.S. to 
Start there. Okay. All right. And different things happen to different people. Okay. Great things. Eh? Okay. Many of them are not here now, but you know, eh? great things happen. And this is a season we are entering into or we are in now. Great things are going to happen. Hallelujah. Okay? So thank God. Eh? All right? Thank God for what is going to happen. Now, if you, if you fail, rather, if you find it so hard eh, to thank God for what you haven't uh, yet seen, eh? okay, what you can do, just get something or remember something he did for you in the past. All right? And then use that, eh, you know, um, to, you know, eh, as in, you know, uh, recall that thing, okay? We think about it, experience the joy that you felt that time, all right? And then, and then say, say that, now, if God did this, okay, then I thank him for what he's going to do. Glory be to God. Okay? You just do that, by the way. Okay? If it's a car he gave you, okay, as you, you enter the car or as you drive, just remember that time when you first got it, when you first got the money, eh? to buy it and you're like, you know, I remember that time, I remember the joy experience, okay, and then use that moment, that experience, okay, to, to look in the future, okay, you know, as you ponder uh, on the thing that God has said he's going to do. Glory be to God. Amen. Last week, I, I decided to go, you know, you know, like most, uh, you know, women are all the same. Eh? They are wonderful people. Like I told you. Okay, we, you know. <laughs> now, my wife hides things. Like all women do. Glory be, you know. Women are what? Wonderful people. So my wife hides important things, eh? documents. Eh? And so there's a place where she hides uh, passports, all those things. Eh? So... <laughs> During the week, eh, I wanted to experience again eh, the joy, you know, eh, when our kids were, were, were born in the, you know, like the first time I held each one of them. Uh, yeah, that, eh, okay? So, so I decided to go, <laughs> okay, where my wife hides eh, those things. Okay, you, even, you have to know even the code, the, you know, eh, but I had it in my head, somehow I had it. So I went, I opened and I, you know, and I was going to walk with them. Okay? So that I sit somewhere, then I unleash it. And I, and, and I look at it, I was like, I remember how all this happened, eh? the dream that, you understand? Eh? Then I get another one, eh? okay? And I said, now, if God did this. You understand? Eh? And I was so happy. Eh? But then, <laughs> you know, eh? the fallen mind, okay? You're like, now, what if something happens? Maybe an accident, and now you have eh, the kids, what? The passports, and any, things happen, and now they do. What are you going to, what? what you, they ask you, what were you doing with it, what? <laughs> okay? Then, then there's a woman in my house who will be the first one, what? Okay, what, you know? <laughs> but I was like, ah, uh, uh, let me you know. For me, I know what I'm doing. Eh? This is the way to, what? Uh, not to psych yourself, but really to create uh, joy in your heart, eh? okay? Which causes you to thank God for what you haven't yet seen. Hallelujah. In fact, I went with them to that in Sasawa, you know, eh? He, he near man. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> then I was like, uh, but, uh, you know, even tomorrow I walk with them, but, eh, but then so I have to hide them somewhere else at home. But I was like, ah, this, this is dangerous. Huh? Okay, anyway, sometime at around 3 p.m. before my wife returned home, I what? <laughs> I hid them in her hiding place. Women are all the same. Don't you women hide things? They keep things safe. Yeah, and by the way, the way to keep things safe is by hiding them. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hiding. 
Hmm? Hiding. Some women even hide what? Glory be to God. Hide food. <laughs> so, this is a season of what? Yes. <laughs> By the way, we had better be what? He's serious because if visitors are here and they hear what I have said in the last, I began with my shirts, you know, eh? they'll be like, I did really, a church like that. Eh? All right? Yeah. But I'm very serious about what I've said. Amen? Yeah, so thank God. Eh? Okay, do something. Eh? If you find it so hard eh, to thank, you know, you know, to thank God for what you have, you know, and you're like, but what, what if, you know, just get something. Maybe it's a phone that you got, eh? okay? You had a wedding last year, this year, eh? okay? And from what I understand, you had loved that chick for many years, many years. Eh? So just go, maybe, I don't know if you, okay? Anyway, do something, you understand, eh? Either pull up the you understand? Yeah? Glory be to God. Amen. It will cause you to what? Hallelujah. Okay. Psalms 67. Psalm 67. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 5 to 7. It says, Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Okay? And what will happen? The earth shall yield her increase. Okay? What does that mean? It means God, our own God, shall bless us. That is after the peoples have praised him. Eh? You understand? Eh? Okay? In this time, when the earth, okay, or oh, when we're supposed to receive increase, okay, when we are supposed to start receiving showers of blessings, okay, we should be in our default mode should be praising God. All right? It should be thanking him. Glory be to God. Okay? But you can't thank God when you're, when you're not content with what you have now. All right? Okay? So, we have to be content, and that uh, heart, you know, will enable us to be grateful for the things we haven't seen. Okay? The things we haven't, what? Received. We shall thank God for... <laughs> Let me say this as a joke. Eh? You know how you say man, eh? as in, you know, eh? you are thanking for eh? air, you know, eh? nothing. Eh? So we're going to thank God for what? As in there's nothing, eh? you have nothing, eh? okay, physically, but you thank God because in the spirit it is done. Glory be to God. In the spirit it is what? It is done. If there's anyone eh, who should have given up on these things of promises, eh? okay, it should, you know, the first one I think should be me. I have things which most of you know about. You know, let's say uh, concerning this church, you know, I man, I have mob stuff. Glory be to God. And I think some of you are wondering, but oh, this guy has told us things from what two or fourteen. You understand? Okay, probably that's why. Uh, Asha, a brand's wife. Okay? Probably that's why there was that dream. Eh? You remember? The tallest building in town? Okay? 
all right? And the, the students were like, but, you know, eh? as in we've been in this same old, same old, nothing's happening, eh? okay? And God was like, eh? you know, you wait. Eh? You think it's going to be done? It's going to happen much faster than what? Do you understand? Eh? So, but when did those things, that, that dream, what, all that word came in 2014? Hmm? Okay? And there has never happened anything, okay, that looks like we are going there. Nothing. Hmm? Nothing. Okay? For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, I remember, I think it was 2014, okay, the first Tuesday of, of that year when Zoe Fellowship, okay? Elvis, of course, 2014, he hadn't yet strayed, okay? The straying happened sometime, I think, in June, June last year. And that explains the first September thing, eh? all right? He had already entered somewhat demonic things. Eh? Anyway, so 2014, the first fellowship of the year, okay? He came because, yeah, anyway, he came to me and he prayed eh? for me, you know, eh? okay? He prayed for me in town. Uh, anyway, so when the fellowship ended, uh, he, was, uh, he drove me back home. Eh? So as we are driving back home, I asked him, what is that that you are praying, you know, eh? about, you know, eh? then he told me that the Lord had, uh, he said, the Lord uh, uh, told me, okay, to pray for you so that the church which you're going to start, all right, will become the leading church in the city, okay, that was the first one, then uh, then some time ago, there was a dream, eh, you know, eh, um, which was like now it will not only be the leading church in the city, but it will also be the largest. Okay? Now, when Asha had that dream, you know, like two months ago, she obviously didn't know anything about those promises. You know, zero. Okay? In fact, Asha hadn't been in church for like a year. All right? And then she had that dream. Okay? Now, since 2014, eh? okay? On the contrary, actually, what has happened is that things, in a sense, it's like, as in, if you look in the in natural, things have just gotten worse, all right, <laughs> for us, isn't it? But God is like, those are yours. According to me, you know, eh? we are moving forward, progressing. You know, yeah? And so you have so many numerous promises. Okay, so if there's anyone we should have left these promising things alone, okay, someone dis getting discouraged and say, man, ah, uh, uh, you know, yeah? Gunomlembe, Guakwe is a magaz. He thinks of just waiting on God to grow the church. Say, man, you had better be, don't be stupid. That's not how, you know, things are done. <laughs> you know, eh? Then you start promising ridiculous things, you know, eh? <laughs> Okay? And because most human beings, Christians, are not content, they will believe the stupid promises you're giving them, and they will come, what? Eh? And they join you. Because things are going to happen in partition, you know, eh? Because they're not content, so, you know, anyone who, you know, eh? And so, um, um, yeah, what were we saying? <laughs> anyway, these showers of blessing are coming, amen? All right? And uh, so we should be, we should praise him. Eh? We should thank him, eh? okay, for where we are now and for where he's taking us. For what we have now, okay, and for what he's going to give us. Glory be to God. Amen. I was listening to Joyce Meyer during the week. Okay? Most people don't know, even my wife. She doesn't know that Joyce Meyer is one of my best what? Uh, who preaches. 
probably I have hidden it from what? From, uh, I'm learning from her, amen? How to hide what? How to hide stuff. Yeah, Joyce Meyer defined contentment as being satisfied with where you are while on the road to where you're going. All right? Hmm? If you're not, if you see, if you're not contented with what you have now, okay, or where you are now, in a sense, you really deserve, you don't deserve anything else from God. Hmm? Okay? You don't, you know, eh? But just imagine you, eh? If you have, like, a friend, an all-in-one, eh? Okay? You give the guy a 50K, the guy, you knew he had nothing. Then you give him 50K. And the guy didn't even thank you. Hmm? Then maybe he reminds you how the other day you didn't what? The other day you knew that he was hungry and you didn't give him, you know, eh? He remind, you gave him 50K, now he's reminding you how you didn't what? Do you understand? Eh? Would you really give that person more? God would, I guess. Eh? Okay, but me, you know, eh? I would first wait for a prophecy. Okay, a prophecy from someone I know is, you know, really authentic eh? Eh, to give that chap more. Hmm? Because like, this guy, you know. Hmm? Okay? So, he's saying, let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Then, Okay, the result of that will be the earth shall yield the increase that God has promised, okay, which is basically the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 4, okay, we're going to remind ourselves about Abraham, eh? okay, the man thanked God. When there was nothing. Hmm? And Abraham had waited longer than me, you know. Eh? <laughs> For me, just four years. Four, four. <laughs> okay. Okay. Romans 4.18, concerning Abraham, it says that, uh, contrary to hope, in hope he believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. What was spoken? God had told him that uh, you see the stars, how numerous they are, okay? Your descendants are going to be like that. All right? That's what God had what? He had told him and said, so shall your descendants be. Verse 19, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. Eh? Okay? I think this means that Abraham, you know, had basically become impotent. Eh? Hmm? When he had Ishmael at 86, okay? Uh, yeah, you know, then by the time he clocks, uh, uh, he gets to this time, you know, things have gotten worse. Okay, the first time, okay, it was the wife who was barren. All right? Glory be to God. So for that one, you can do something about it. Okay? He got the maid. All right? But God is like, that's not what I promised you. Hmm? I gave you a promise, you know, it has tarried, then you start becoming, to use, be wise, you know, you have to use wisdom. Why did God give you that wisdom? You think God gave you wisdom for nothing? Okay, then you start doing your own things. And you get them, eh? all right? You might get them, but one day, that thing might, you might regret all right? Like Abraham did later. And so, later, okay, even 
Abraham also becomes important. Things get worse, not like LAT. There was a time when we would be like 80 people. There wouldn't be what? Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> then things what? Woo, got worse. Hmm? All right. You're not the first person eh, for things, what? To get you. You're not the first. All right? Until the people who are coming after you, that eh, you're not the last. That even them, what? They are, <laughs> their time is coming. Eh? Hallelujah. So, Abraham, things got worse. Hmm? But it says he believed God. Eh? Okay? Verse 19, it says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, which was already dead since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. How? Giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay? Whichever way you interpret uh, verse 20, those are yours, but for me, for the many years, I've interpreted it as the man was thanking God. Okay? Okay? Glorifying God when things have even gotten worse. Worse. People thank God eh, when they have what? When they get a car. Hanatke, 100,000. All right. <laughs> okay. That language is commonly used by Maureen's husband. Eka Hanat. Eh? You know, people thank God. Okay. Then God is like, I'm going to give you more money. Okay. So they're expecting 200. Then <laughs> things get worse. Instead of, Ooh, then. Sh- Either some guy robs them, or you know, and things happen and things get worse. And you know, you now people start to re exude, you know, what is in their heart, complaining, grumbling, you know. Eh? Okay? But Abraham, okay, things got worse, but he glorified God. Okay? Because God had promised. Hmm? Abraham, somehow, he had uh, a certain revelation of God. Eh? Okay? Somehow it says that Abraham, you know, was God's friend. So he knew the person who had promised. Hmm? Say, guy, Momani, I know this guy. He doesn't lie. Hmm? So he told people, man, eh? For me, you know, things are what? Things are for real. And he began thanking him, thanking God. Hmm? Things got worse, but uh, actually, his name even changed from Abraham to Abraham. Now, things have gotten worse, and then apparently, from what people are hearing, what you're calling yourself, it's like they've even gotten worse in the head. You understand? No, so now the guy is important. And now even he has what? Plucked wires. Chopped wires. Because you now he, the guy has even changed his name. You know, eh? Calling himself father of many nations. The guy has no, you know, eh? Then not even a kid. Okay? Okay, but he glorified God. He thanked him. Eh? Okay? And we all know how the story ended. Okay? He got a child. Okay, he got a son. Eh? Isaac came. After Isaac, you know, Isaac begat who? Okay? And that who begat? And you're among those eh? who are what? Who were begat? 
Glory be to God. I hope you know that. Eh? I hope you know that you want to know the what? The fulfillment of this prophecy. Okay? In a sense, eh? we're spiritually speaking. All right? So God is faithful. Eh? Exactly what Sam was telling you at the beginning. Eh? Okay? His covenant, he will not break, nor alter the things, okay? The words which have come out of what? If anything should change, okay? Um, now, this is why it is so important to work with God, hmm? with your friend. Eh? You know, like Abraham works with his friend God, eh? okay? Because... I'm sure by the, if you've worked with God like for three years, eh, okay, you, you should now know this, eh, that sometimes things change. Eh? Then God has to what? Rearrange things. Eh? Okay, now should that happen, if you're still working with him closely, he will let you know that now there's stuff I told you. Okay? I'm working on it. However, not in the way I told you it would be done. Because things have changed, this has happened, and you understand, eh? okay? I'll give you an example from my own life. There are things, uh, several things, eh? okay, which God had promised me, okay? Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, they had to do with uh, me and Elvis, you know, eh? Okay, I think that is why I was among the first people yeah, to know. Okay, I was among the first people God to reveal to me that things that what things had gone bad. Okay, I think, and I could be right. I think I'm right. I think it it is because there were several things. Yeah, okay, several promises. Yeah, that had to do, you know, uh, to me, but they had to, uh, to do with Elvis and Zoe. You know what I mean? Eh? So something changed, and God had to quickly let me know so that I don't continue to believe for something which, you know, eh? uh, so that he can tell me, no, okay, I'm still going to do it, but however, in another way. Do you understand? Okay? Okay? However... God is faithful. Hmm? God is what? God is faithful. Eh? Okay? If you had a, you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, you know? Okay? But we say God doesn't give girlfriend and God doesn't. Anyway, so you had someone you're going to marry, okay? And God told you, okay, that you together, you're going to have a wonderful child or any you're going to do these things you're going to buy the whole of Kampala you know eh? <laughs> you, you know eh? then things happen maybe this person somehow becomes stupid and starts dealing in cocaine <laughs> and the cocaine what messes them up and they die eh? all right so what happens what God told you because it was you together. God will, have, will find a world what? A, without the other person. Do you understand? Eh? Okay? But the, the point I'm trying to make is that what? God is faithful. Eh? Okay? And as you wait to see what he promised you, be grateful. Okay? Praise him. Eh? Thank him eh? for what he's going to do. If you find it so hard to thank him for what you haven't yet seen, do what I did. All right? Okay? Get pictures of something he did, something that made you glad those days. Eh? You understand? Eh? Or a message you got those days when any, anything, eh, you know, eh, that caused you great joy, eh? pull it up eh? and meditate on you know? it. Remember how wonderful it was. Eh? And then say, if he did this, then... Eh? I thank him for what he's going to do. Glory be to God. Amen? God is faithful. Hallelujah. Hmm? 
All right? Hmm? God is what? Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Paul, Paul, ah, this has reminded me of some guy who sent me a wonderful message eh? yesterday. But let's read Paul first. No, before we read, let me get a message. Hallelujah. Eh? Eh? God is what? God is good. Okay? Carol, this for, yeah, this should make you happy. Um, Brian, you know Apostle Ronnie Yiga? Ronnie Yiga. Okay. So he sent me a message yesterday. He uh, says, good morning, Shepherd Moses. I have been going through your five articles of key lessons from our history. You remember those words of the week? Each of them was like reading episodes in the Bible. Every statement <laughs> was pregnant with truth and impactful. Okay, thank you for sharing and guiding the saints. We bless the Lord for the anointing that manifests time and again in your articles. Okay? But the key thing was, each of them was like reading episodes in the Bible. You know, eh? Now, eh? for me, when I read those things, <laughs> I don't see this. Eh? But knowing who is writing, eh? I think it is true. Because I know this guy, this is one of the uh, greatest, like, anyway. Hallelujah. So let's go back to what? Paul. All right? Okay. I remember I was trying to get a message to preach yesterday. I wasn't feeling good, but you know, you pray, no? Then I checked on my phone. There's a message. I read it. I, all of a sudden, you're like, now I can preach, eh? Glory be to God. So then Paul tells the Colossians in chapter 2, verse 7, he says that, you know, you should be rooted and built up in him, in Christ, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it. Abounding in the what? In the faith with thanksgiving. Glory be to God. Okay? Okay? We receive from God by faith. Eh? All right? And Paul is saying the way to abound in that faith, okay? Okay? To be able to receive what God is giving you, okay? Is by what? With thanksgiving. Hmm? That is essentially what Abraham did. Okay? The way say he believed God. Eh? You know, eh? and you glorified him. Hallelujah. Hmm? With a grateful heart. Hmm? Yesterday, rather on Thursday, okay? And every, you know, they are, you know, like age, eh? you know? I'm older than most of you, okay, including Sam. Okay? You just see Sam there with what? But I'm older than him. Okay? So, eh, you know, uh, eh, yeah, you know, there, there's always someone above or below you in anything. Eh? And it is of God, eh? you, you, you know. Eh? And then if you're faithful with God, then you grow. Eh? And so on Thursday, as we worshipped, you know, after praying, okay, eh, I got to realize that my have been to be more eh, level as in Bassinia. Okay? Because I was there seeing, you know, closing my eyes, eh? you know, then at a, at a certain point, okay, Juliana unleashed that song with a grateful, I opened, I was like, now, can I see me? You know, you could really sense eh, that now eh, the game has been upped, okay, with a grateful heart, eh? you know. But in a, you know, if you're there on Thursday, well, I don't know if you sense this thing, but the moment she, you know, with a great, I was like, only Juliana at that point in time eh, could unleash that one. From the blue, eh, okay? And mine was wonderful. Eh? Glory be to God. 
But what, why was I saying that? I don't know. Eh? I don't know why I was saying that. Okay, so anyway, be grateful. Eh? Okay, thank God. Eh? Don't be like what? The children of Israel in the wilderness. Eh? They were destined for, for the promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. Okay, a land, you know, God said that this land, okay, you will eat bread without scarcity and you will lack nothing. Okay? Taking them to the, the promised land. Eh? Okay? And man, along the way, hmm? when things started, what? Getting worse. Hmm? Things started, what? <laughs> Getting worse, man. We were there eating, what? Cucumbers. Eh? Okay, yes, they were, were eh? hustling. It was tough, eh? but we, are, we had stuff. Ready meal eh? after working, they give you food. Hmm? Isn't that a good deal? But now here we are. We're not working and what? No even food, you know. Eh? Things got worse. Okay, and they began complaining, murmuring. Okay, and they didn't enter the wilderness. Why? For only that simple reason. Hmm? Simple reason, eh? It is not simple. Being discontent, eh? not being grateful, eh? okay? Not believing God, you know, and you express it with thanksgiving, eh? It is not a minor thing. Hmm? It is not a minor thing. It is so major eh, that guys, that whole crowd, eh, died in the wilderness. Hmm? Okay? They died. They didn't use any curse words. At least it is not recorded in the Bible. Hmm? But that attitude, eh, okay? They didn't thank God. They were not grateful for why he's taking them. Just these little things eh, messed them up. And God is like, All right? And no amount of intercession could change that. Okay? That means that there are some things prayers can't do. Hallelujah. Prayers can't do anything, isn't it? Huh? Well, that's your opinion. That's your what? There are some things, prayers, what? <laughs> you, you couldn't save these guys. And they all died. In the, by this small thing, which, you know, we think it's a small thing. Eh? Okay? All right? Glory be to God. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1 to 5, it says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, okay, God was not pleased. Okay? For that reason, their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Okay? That means they died in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Okay? God was not pleased. Eh? We all know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Eh? So, the only thing that got them killed in the wilderness was unbelief. Unbelief which was demonstrated by their murmuring, complaining. Lunch is supposed to be at 1 p.m. Then, five past one. So, this guy is not serious. You know, <laughs> all right? Man, eh? God, God was going to feed. God was going to give them water. You understand? Eh? Remember, you said there was a rock that followed them. In that rock, there was water. 
Okay? But because somehow things were not happening according to what? Their schedule. All right? And this is now what messes up people. Okay? God promises people things and he hasn't put a date to them. Okay? We start, you know. Now, like, to, eh? God has said he's going to bless us. Eh? You understand? Eh? We reward us. It was said in September. Okay? Then someone starts saying, yeah, God told us that in October. You understand? Eh? You know, eh? I guess it's October for different people. For some people, it is September. You, you know, eh? So for you, if it is not September, and then you start to say, September, just because the word was given in September, then now, what? September 30th. But you're like, the good thing with September has 31 days. That's a good thing. So there's an extra day. You, you know, something can happen on the last day, you know. Eh? <laughs> eh, <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you get broken hearted. You know, eh? Then you start. Okay. Of course, since you're saved, we shall we still see you, you know, eh? But in your heart, eh? you're like. They will never gala, you know, eh? Okay, then you start complaining, mama ring, you know, eh? With your friends who are not saved. You know, for me, you know, then you, you're the one who starts to warn people. You be careful, be careful with those prophecies. Eh? This, there was this kind of thing, this like, uh, picture I saw uh, towards the end of the year, you know, like 31st uh, December. Or some guy, eh? you know, like a peak. Some guy holding a big rock, a stone. Eh? Okay? You're the one who sent it to me. Waiting somewhere. Apparently, he was waiting for the pastor who prophesied that this year, that year, <laughs> was going to be the year of what? <laughs> a guy, a big, waiting somewhere in the corner to club at the guy. Corner, this is 31st, what? December. You know what said? You wait. That thing is going to come again in December. <laughs> Those things just come, you know. Eh? You sit and then you, 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 you what? Yeah, you're, eh. anyway. So you start attaching what? Dates to, you know, dates which God didn't say. Okay? Okay? Verse 10 of, uh, yeah, he talks about how they complained. Eh? Okay? Verse 10, it says, they complain, don't complain as some of them also complain and were destroyed by who? The destroyer. Glory be to God. Amen? Don't do that. Amen? Hallelujah. Be content with where you are now. Okay? Thank God for what you have now. Okay? As you wait, eh? okay, as you're on the journey to the promised land eh? to receive what God is going to give you. This word is for sure God is going to reward you. All right? Okay? All right? Hallelujah. But in the meantime, have a grateful heart. With a grateful heart, you know? That song was what? If you had led praise and worship today, I was going to get you what? But I was mindful of Bruce. I was like, Bruce might not know how to play it. So I looked at the Albert is not around. Yeah, so let me cheer them. Okay, but we are going to do that song. It's awesome. Eh? Okay, so be what? Content. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6. From verse 6 it says that godliness with contentment is great gain. If God can say something is great gain, eh, then man, eh, that thing is serious. Eh? It is precious. Hmm? And he says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Hmm? Contentment. Hallelujah. Then he says, some of you have to get a revelation of this. Eh? 
For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain. It is for sure. I tell you the truth. You're not taking anything out. Hmm? So be grateful with what you have. Hmm? You came with nothing and you're going to live with nothing. Jesus said, okay, we said it already, that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he has. Why? Because the man came with nothing. Hmm? Yet he had a life. Glory be to God. Hmm? Amen? I'm content, you know, with, uh, you know, sometimes we do a Bible study with, you know, five guys. Now here I am, you know. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. With this precious what? <laughs> promise, you know, eh? have a CV in heaven. Eh? People dream about my CVs in heaven, you know. Eh? And then you are talking to what? Four guys. <laughs> You're like, these Ugandans don't know what, what they are missing. They don't know who is teaching. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. But I mean, for me, I'm enjoying myself. I'm like, mm, as long as God, what? Pays the rent. You know, eh? For me, I'm happy. I'm like, you know. Glory be to God. Okay? Have you watched some Kenneth Hagin videos? The great Kenneth Hagin. Hmm? <laughs> Some of them, eh? the room was more or less empty. Kenneth Hagin teaching. Hmm? And people were not there. The great Kenneth Hagin. Eh? Not, your, not your what? You know him? Eh? Hagin. You know Hagin. Hillary knows Hagin. You know Hagin. Okay, what's her name? Carol knows Hagen. Okay, she appeared in her, he appeared in her dream sometime uh, and told her some stuff. Hagen, eh? and you see, Hagen was not even what I'm embarrassed to 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 distribute such videos where the great Kenneth Hagen. <laughs> The room was what? A few people said, now, how do you say you're that great Kenneth again? You say Jesus Christ appears to you. You know, Jesus, he walks in, you know. Eh? And then, then add up. That Jesus, why didn't he bring the people? If he thinks, if he says you're that great. Hagin was like, those are yours. For me, I'm sharing what I've told, you know. The great Hagin. Now, people were there in the neighborhood. They were there. Hmm? They were what? They were there and they knew Brother Hagin is what? Is he? But probably they had gotten so used to him. Eh? Ah, he's going to read Hebrews 11. Now faith is a substance of things for. It will be my new Mark 11, eh? 23, 23, you know? Womack says that Hagin is the one who wrote that what? That, you know, eh? because Hagin mad, that was his delight. And you get, you, you should know that passage in KJV. Hmm? <laughs> it sounds wonderful in KJV. You understand? So I think guys were like, you understand? In fact, about that generation, right now we're deeper. Eh? Hagin even doesn't know the Greek of faith. Yeah, you see, Kamanilo eh? now. You understand? Tamani, I take a faith for Katumani, the Greek, the Hebrew. Brother Hagin. Hmm? Okay? So, the, uh, uh -huh. for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food, and clothing, with this we shall be content. Food and clothing. He hasn't even mentioned the house. Food and clothing. 
we shall be what? Content. Who is speaking? Not Brother Hagin. You know, Paul the Apostle. Who according to Rick Joyner? Okay. Okay. Up until 1990 something, no one had worked closely to the Lord eh? like Paul did. And he's telling you, for me, if I just have food and clothing, I'm going to, I'm grateful. Hmm? Not that I don't want more, but if I have these things now, I'm like, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen? Hmm? Contentment. Okay? This is the attitude we should have during this time. Eh? Contentment, okay, which also results in thanksgiving, into praise. And then the earth will yield her increase. As we read. Amen? Then it says, like I was telling people at the Bible study, I hated this verse, verse 8. It's because saying, and it says, verse 9 rather, it says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Okay? Who end up that way? Those who desire to be what? To be rich. Now, how many of you desire to be rich? Now, that is what is going to befall you. You're going to what? To fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Hmm? So you had better stop desiring to be rich. Hmm? <laughs> Glory be to God. You have refused. So you're the guys who pick and choose which scriptures, what? He <laughs> just told you what's going to happen to you. Man, I desire to be rich, eh? Okay? And I loved God's word. So I was always even reading the Bible, you know, those things of cover to cover, you know. But this verse, eh, I hated it. Eh? Okay? So I was just, but I was like, one day, eh, God will help me understand it. Because I used to tell God I want to be rich. I desire to be rich. Because I like, I to give me a lot of money, you know, so that I can be a blessing, eh? Then the scripture would say now. Eh? All right? But it, it didn't mean what I thought it meant. Eh? All right? It is ex, uh, explained in the verse which follows. Eh? Okay? Verse 10 says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. All right? Verse 9 says that those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Da, 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 da. Then verse 10 says, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Okay? For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay? All right? But remember, it started with contentment. Say, godliness with contentment is great gain. Isn't it? Okay? And verse 9 says, but those who desire to be rich. That means the people Paul is talking about are those who are not contented with what they have. Hmm? Those are the guys, the desiring to be rich, those are the people he's talking about. And such people, what will happen? Okay? What will happen to them? In verse 9, it says, they are going to fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts 
which drown men. When people drown, okay, what does drowning mean? Okay? You die. Eh? Okay, so he says, drown men in destruction, as in they die. Okay? And in the context, it's about spiritually. Okay? And perdition. You remember? Judas? Okay? The son of what? Perdition. Eh? Eternally damned. Okay? So those who are not content, okay? If they're not careful, okay, they end up there. Because if you're, so there are the people who God say, who people say they love money. They love money. They have some money, but they're not content. They want, you know, they're not grateful. So they're like, so sooner or later they start doing many things to get the money. Things which God doesn't allow. Hmm? Cocaine. All right? Homosexuality. You remember there were guys in Uganda years ago, and I don't think it has stopped. Okay? For every video they would send to some Western um, countries where they were in the act of, of uh, you know, in the act, they would get $100,000. You remember those things, eh? A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. You do the math. Hmm? That is how much money? Hmm? 370. And our house is finished. You know, eh? You know, you know eh? Those who desire to be rich, they are not content. Now, especially like now, Preachers, eh? okay? Because Kati, Kamba Murimwa, prosperity anointing. Eh? Okay? So you saw into what the anointing, eh? Prosperity, you know? If you give a broke pastor, you become broke. Okay? <laughs> if you give a prosperous what? Pastor, yeah, you'll be, you are, you'll prosper. Meanwhile, <laughs> the Paul. Anyway, that scripture which guys use, eh? by the time Paul wrote it, that since you've given to me, my God's going to supply, you understand? Eh? You know, the grace upon me. Eh? The guy had nothing. He was in prison. He was in prison when he wrote that. My, eh, you know, the grace upon me is going, you know, eh? she, the guy was in prison. Have you ever thought about that? So, guys were sewing into what? A broke guy. A broke guy. Hmm? Now, here in our Kampala today, eh? a church, they imprison your pastor. Okay? For, he hasn't done wrong, but somehow they, and then, then they put them there. So, the guy has nothing. Then you learn that the kids no longer go to school. Eh? So, the pastor is broke. You know, eh? Then say, man, you don't sew in that pastor. If the kids are not going to school, and for me, mine are going to school, so how can I sew into that? Isn't it? This was the same scenario Paul was in. He was in prison, that scripture. And my God shall supply because of what you have given. You understand? Eh? Okay? He was, a, in quotes, a broke guy. Hallelujah. Now you can see how all our theology gets, you know, eh? Messed up. First, read the guy who was writing that. Eh? Which grace to tap into? The guy had nothing. Nothing. Where does that put what? Our doctrines. Hmm? Guy had nothing. Anyway, so, this guy, kind of, not so, what are we going to say? So, yeah, you see, eh? This whole thing then? So, you're a pastor, you are now. Guys are not going to sow into me. People are not going to give because um, I don't look prosperous. Okay? I haven't worn black with the whatever of God. You know that. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? So, you're not, co- then you become discontented. Eh, man. You know, eh? you know, eh? All right. <laughs> you're going to get discontented, you know, because, you know, other pastors over what, you know, our prophets are looking over how. Eh? All right, then now you're like, now, what kind of revelation do you have? Your revelation is not working for you. You know, eh? <laughs> so how can we be, you know, eh? Ah, 
Then, man, the devil, meanwhile, is kubazaring you, you know, eh? Then he sends you what? An offer. Just do this first of all. No one is going to know. Okay? Then send it to the U.S. And a hundred thousand, what? You know, eh? And you see, when you get that $100,000, you can't stop there. You always need another one. 100000 Before you know it, you're the, eh, the, leading, <laughs> the leading pastor in town. All right? I wonder about so many international school, you know, <laughs> eh? the, whatever, those schools. Eh? Ambrosoli, you know, eh? Okay, your wife shops in France, you know, in Paris, then she has breakfast in London. There was a Nigerian who preached that thing. You remember? Years ago. John, I think you are in P2. Uh, if we were around, some guy, oh yeah, those Nigerians. Eh? I think it was Tunde, Bakari, any of those guys. Eh? But he was anointed, and he's still a man of God, but somehow, eh, guy came, told you, Ghanans. Eh? My wife, you know, she has breakfast in where, and then lunch over where, then she shops, you know, different cities eh, in Europe. And then you look at Ugandan pastors. <laughs> you know, they even don't know how a visa looks like. Now that thing just gets them discontented, man. Eh? Your wife even there in shop. Because, man, you can flog, you can't go and flog, they won't get out of Zungu, they are broke. Hmm? Now, then an offer comes, a hundred thousand dollars. And you get it now, you appear what? Prosperous. So now guys can sow into you. Hmm? Kwanga, you know? Okay? So they can tap into what? The grace upon your life. Eh? You know, these things, man, eh? these things, eh? we really need to work with God. Because eh? we're shouting things we don't understand. Eh? You go and read Philippians, and you'll see where Paul was when he said that. He was, in quotes, a very broke guy, man. Hmm? He couldn't even get himself out of prison. Well, but if your, your revelation is not working for you, Jesus what? set us free. Now your revelation is not working. A man of God, if you're prosperous, you, you're supposed to be, you know, eh? your revelation is working for you. You should be having dominion over the prison, eh, the whatever, the system. Now at Bakusibi, what kind of dominion do you have? Authority, you know. Eh? But the guy said, you know, eh, what you've done for me, eh, you know, eh? these things are not what? They're not simple. Glory be to God. Hmm? So it says, and so people are not discontented, are the ones who, who desire to be rich. And verse 10, they're the same guys again who love money. Okay? Discontented means desiring to be rich. They're the same guys. Eh? And in verse 10 again, you see, they stray from the faith. Just like in the other verse, it says they drown, they die. Okay? Straying from the faith means denying Jesus. Eh? Okay? You, you no longer have your faith for salvation is no longer in Jesus. You strayed. One of our call. All those scriptures are explaining each other. Do you understand? Eh? Okay? They stray from the faith. Hmm? But it all began with being discontented. All right? That's why Paul said, you guys, godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay? Joyce Meyer said contentment is being satisfied with where you are while on the way to where you're going. Hmm? It does not mean that you don't want more. You understand? Eh? God is a God of increase. You understand? He's a God of increase. Eh? All right? Hallelujah. 
He's a God of inquiry. He wants to give people more. God wants to reward. Okay? But before then, you should be satisfied with what you have and with where you are. If you're not, you know, eh, this thing can take you mpola and mpola before you know it. You know? Hallelujah. Okay? There's this preacher most of you know. You know, who this dream started to come that he had what? You know, strayed from the faith. Eh? Okay? Hallelujah. Juliana, you forgive me, but uh, I was told. <laughs> anyway, so there's a guy called uh, James, eh? uh, that guy. You know, he dreamed when this preacher was with Muslims. Muslims. And the girl was like, he was like, what, God, what did this guy know? So he woke up and him, him, he immediately knew that it means this guy is now an unbeliever. Do you understand? Eh? Okay? There's someone eh, who dreamt when, you know, she was singing that in a song where there was a Jesus eh, beat. Eh? And this girl was angry in the dream because this chick was singing that name. You know, eh? And so one time, there's a guy I know who asked the Lord that God what happened? What happened? Okay? That same night, he had a dream. Okay? The dream is long, and, and, but, but the whole thing was, it, it was like God was highlighting the money bit. So it's like God was responding to the guy that what brought all these issues? Okay? Okay? Money. There could have been other things, eh? but in the guy's dream, because the guy was like, God, what happened? Okay? God responded with money. Hmm? All right? And strayed from the faith. You, you remember Jesus? Okay? The devil came and gave him an offer. Eh? I'm telling you, if these things get you when you're known, that you could stand by. Hmm? Just send a video, one hundred what, one hundred thousand dollars. Jesus, the devil took him on a high hill. You know, the Bible says he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment, and not just a kingdom, but the Bible says and their glory, glory, not just broke kingdoms. Eh? Just take you to some kingdom of in which region of Kampala, which I won't name. Just see nothing, man. You just realize you're going to inherit problems. <laughs> Those things of... <laughs> there's some guy who wanted to be... My God, you guys forgive me. It's fine. There's some guy who wanted to be MP. So anyway, he went, he campaigned, he became MP. In the middle of the, of the town, he said that, I'm not coming back for what? Next year? Because people, people are broke, bands about saying it. Because I'm not coming back. And he didn't. Kuzi's man, these broke guys. They think I'm the one who's supposed to. <laughs> so Jesus, man, any, an offer came. The devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And then he says, you know, if you worship me, I will give you all this. Hmm? This is what happened. Hmm? You stray from the faith. You fall for, you know, eh? Hallelujah. Now, what God is saying, that for us, you know, during this, especially during this season, okay, we should be what? Be grateful and call, you know, all right? Glory be to God. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, which some, have, which some having what? Straight from the faith have pierced themselves with, through with many sorrows, eh? okay? Straight from the faith in their greediness. You see, greediness, eh? Greediness means you're not content with what you have. Greedy, not content, desiring to be rich, love of money, all those words mean the same thing in the context of this what? chapter. Hallelujah. But for us, we're desiring to be rich for the right motives. And right now, before those billions come, if they ever come to you, okay, before they come, we are content and grateful. We thank God. 
wherever you, you, you have lunch from, whether it is a kafunda, you understand, eh? where you don't want some chick to see you, all right? Okay? Some ka place, lunch is one five. You don't want some ka chick in LAT to ever know that one. All right? <laughs> okay? It's okay not to want that chick to ever know, but while you're there eating, man, say, man, God, eh? I'm pers- thank you, eh? I'm having lunch. Hallelujah. Okay? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for what we've had. Father, help us to be grateful. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Help us to be grateful. Help us to be content. Father, like Sam said, the word that has gone out of your mouth, you can't change it. You are a covenant keeping God. You're a covenant-keeping God. So we thank you, Father, for this is the season of rewards. You have confirmed this in amazing ways. And we're excited that we're going to eat of your goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Adam Tabernacle, Christ for the Nations.